You've all been there. You hear the crowd go out. Is there a doctor in the house? All goes quiet. But now you can stand up proudly and say, I'm not a doctor. I'm a nerd with an Arduino and cheap Chinese pull center. Let me at the patient. Is that it? <sighs> so this is our breadboard design of the actual circuit. It's got the four, five main components, if you include the switch. We've got the Arduino Nano itself, the OLED screen, the little piezo sounder, the actual heartbeat sensor, just going out of shot a little bit, that's the actual heartbeat sensor, and a switch to turn it on and off. I suppose you could count the battery pack as another component to it perhaps. So let's switch on. I'll go through the actual connections first actually. Um, the OLED, I've connected many of these little 128 by 64 screens up on many of my projects. Basically you've got a ground and a supply which is the first two pins here and that's those two connections there. So ground is the first pin and supply is the next pin which I've just taken off the normal rail that you would do. So I've took the, the 5 volts from the Arduino up to the, the uh, 5 volt supply rail and the ground up to the ground rail, I'm using the ground rail. And then you've got two more, you've got an SDA and an SCK connection. The SDA is this blue wire, going to a, just check, a4. And the yellow wire, the clock, the SCK, the clock, going to the a5. Next little PSO sounder just goes, the wiring, just little, these little thin wires on the grinds up here, there, and the actual uh, positive to the actual PSO is connected to D8 on the Nano. The heartbeat sensor itself just takes power and ground, and the actual third connection for it, not that easy to see this one here, actually goes into A0, analog input 0 of the Arduino Nano. The switch is just to supply power, obviously. But what we've got, we've got the battery pack. Now you do not connect your battery up to the supply rails here. This is going to blow your Arduino. To make it more portable, especially when we put it onto some prototyping board, so on some prototyping board, you don't want to be keep connecting it to your computer on here. That's great for when you quickly um Design your code and prototype in, you want to quickly squirt your code across and power it at the same time, that's fine. For a more permanent solution, some sort of battery power is the way to go. Now you could use a LiPo cell, but then you're talking about recharging circuits as well. So to keep this simple for beginners, I've got these little 5 cell AA battery pack. That gives a nominal voltage of 7.5 volts. When they're all brand new like this, you get about 8 volts out of it. This has to go into the Arduino's VIM pin, which is this one here. Its very last pin at the top here is a VIM pin, voltage in pin. If you connect it up to the 5 volt rail, you know, if it, which is this pin here, by either connect it directly to that or on here, you're going to blow that within fractions of seconds. It's going to be fried, possibly along with just about anything else on this board as well. So make sure that any sort of battery source you get in, goes to the VI in pin. It also needs to be at least 7 volts in potential, between 7 and 12 is accepted range I believe. It needs to be 7 and not as low as say 5 or 6 because the voltage regulator which is what's going to happen, this is this power on the VI in pin goes to a voltage regulator which then brings it down to a steady 5 volts and that's what goes out on the 5 volt pin to all these other components and what supplies the actual Arduino Nano. It, the actual regulator is on the other side of an Arduino Nano board, so we can't see it on here on the top side, but it needs it, it, it needs about a 2 volt voltage drop to operate, so you need at least a minimum of about 7 volts. So this little pack providing 8 when they're brand new, 8 volts when they're brand new, and normally 7.5, and, and obviously it'll probably drop to about 7 or so over a quite a period of use. When it's got to about 7 volts or so, you'll have squeeze most of the energy out of these they will not be too bad so we'll just plug that in so I mean to make sure this goes to the well not to the VIM pin I could do I could connect that to the VIM pin and then it'll just switch on right away but I've hooked up a switch which if you look carefully 
one connection of the switch goes to the VIN pin there. So I'm going to put my other positive connection to the other part side of the switch. So when I switch the switch, it will provide power through the switch to the VIM pin. And then the ground can just go into any old ground socket. You connect it to the same ground as the Arduino. So I can just put it on the end here. It's only the positive it needs to go to the voltage in. I think we've got a connection there. Just push that in. So we'll give that little switch on. Just a little simple slider switch. And it's going. If I can just get a steady voltage on my finger. There we go. And so on. Okay, switch that off. So what we're going to do now, we're going to prototype that onto some prototyping board, which it may be as far as you want to take it, but at least then it'll be all soldered up onto a board more portable and it's not going to fall apart like it would do on a breadboard. So this is the type of prototyping board I'm using. Well, I said it is a prototyping board, but for some this is as far as the project would go and it'd be fine mounting on this as a permanent solution for a one-off. So this is... It's not perf board, you might think it is, looks pretty much like it from that side. It is called strip board or there's Vera board which is basically a brand name of this type of board. Looking carefully, I'm going to apologise for the shine from the light. That's going to be pretty hard to avoid with this sort of board. But basically you've got copper strips that run along. Perf board is just copper holes, so little holes with a bit of copper around. And if you've watched. Great Scott, you'll see he uses that a lot, and you'll see close-ups of that. But this is strip board, and you've got the holes in the copper. But the, 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 this row is completely joined together, one row of copper, then this row. I just prefer working with this. This is what I started with back when I was a, 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 literally almost a nipper. I would order this sort of board from Maplins. Maplins are a local distributor in the UK, and they actually don't exist anymore. They uh, went into liquidation, I think it was somewhere at the beginning of this year or thereabouts, maybe spring. So this is strip board, and I use this, and you've just got to connect up. So it has advantages, you don't have to add as many jumper wires, but you've also got to cut some tracks sometimes in places. So if you look on the screen, this has got to be a piece of strip board that is 30 across by 21 holes down. Now, this, you can buy it like this, this strip board is 30 holes across, so that's cool. And you can see, well, you might not be able to see, you might not pick up on camera very well, but it's also got numbered down the side. I mean, you could physically count them one, two, three, four, five, etc., for 21 down, but luckily it's number 21. And so that will fit all the parts on it I want to fit on. But I would also like to make sure, because I'm going to mount the battery pack on the board, on the back of the board from where the components are. The components, this is the component side where the tracks aren't. Your components might on here. You saw on this side, and I will be putting possibly a bit of cushion in there. I will be mounting this battery pack in some way, shape, or form on here, whether it's just hot glue or whatever it might be. So I want to make sure that, that my design of 30 by 21 that's going to fit on the back of there. So then I would have a cut off board, and the battery pack's just sitting on the back with a switch, and we can use it like that. You can see it'd be a nice sort of solution. So double checking that, see where 21 comes to. 21 comes to right there, so yeah. If I cut, so there's 21 holes, which means I'm going to cut along the 22. So when you're cutting um, straight board, perf board, cut along the holes. I find the easiest. Scalp along there, which I'm going to do in a second. And if I do that, at 22, I'll leave me 21 holes free. And yeah, that'll fit the battery pack on. Great. So I'll just put on a bit of other strip board like that. And you don't really need a ruler. Unless you've got a particularly shaky hand. So I just need to be able to see the numbers where I'm starting though. So I'm going to cut along the 22 line. And please keep straight now that I've said you don't need a ruler. Come on. And just cut along there like that. I'll take that from the other side as well. Let's go along again. You shouldn't put your hands behind the blade like I just did then. Good way of getting yourself a nice slice. Okay. That should do it, that should just snap now, which it does, that's our board, and I said the battery pack should fit nicely on there, like that. Okay, so that's our board cut to side, 
size next thing is to follow the diagram we've got on screen and make the appropriate holes I have a cutting tool I showed this in a previous video uh, these are made for cutting vera board it's basically a little bit of a drill bit really in in a, plas a plastic housing so you could use a drill bit if you're trying to hold a fiddle with it it's doable uh, this makes it just a little bit easy to grip they're, I don't know they really really are pennies not pennies but they're not a lot of money to buy so I've done the diagram for you which is on screen down the corner and I'll make it big size for a few seconds for those that want to um, perhaps refer to it on a big screen or print it out I'll do that now okay so you can pause that on that diagram if you want to but basically I'm going to cut where it said I had to cut holes on here like that and I bring in fact I'll put the actual I showed you the entire diagram roll three elements on it the first element was the holes and where you put the wires and then where you put the components <laughs> So once you're sure that's all correct, that you've not made a, a big cock up, putting a hole in the wrong place, that really does need double checking, you need to just simply turn over your board, like that, and that's now the correct orientation for the second diagram, which shows wiring. I'll bring that up on screen now for a few seconds, you can pause the video if you want to refer to that on screen, or transfer it and print it out while you're actually doing the wiring yourself. Okay, so get on and we'll wire up the first wire. So you need to, again, look at your diagram and you count where it is in the hole. So the first one right at the top here is a red one. The, the colours usually matter for what I'm doing. Red will always be some sort of supply rail and black will be a ground negative rail. And any other colour is data or something like that. So the first wire at the top right will just go through slowly. It's one, two, three down that way, and one, two, three across that way is where it starts. So I'm going to solder a red wire in there. I don't think I can actually draw a pen. Oh, my pen is marking it. That's quite handy, actually. So you can get something that can mark it temporarily for you. And then it is going all the way along there. And I'm just counting across the position 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm literally looking on my screen at the same time like you will be doing as well. It is 15 holes in across from that way. Just double checking that and it is worth doing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I was wrong. It is worth double checking. It is actually 14 uh, holes along that way. And again, you can look at your own diagram to check that what I'm saying is correct, but it is doing. I've double checked. So it's at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it is that hole just there, and we'll mark that off. So that is 14 across, and obviously we've got the red wire is going from that position to that position. So cut yourself a piece of wire that will go in there, fit it in, solder it on those sides, and then repeat for the other wires. And we'll come back in a second when I've done all that. So there we go, all the wiring done. Hopefully all in the correct place. Next thing is to move on to actually putting on our Arduino and our OLED screen. I'll put a picture up of the final bit now where you have to put the components on. I'll leave it up again just for a few seconds if you want to pause the video there. Don't forget, you can find this project on extronical.com and you can actually get the pictures there at full resolution if you want to and print them out. Now, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put the Arduino on first, but as I'm embarrassingly a little bit short of Arduinos at the moment, I mean, I've had one that was brand new actually be dead on arrival when I sold it up and it wouldn't work and I've got about a three or so others in various different projects that I don't want to quite remove from that project just yet I want to leave them in so I'm going to reuse the one that I've got on the breadboard there but I don't want to permanently solder it in at the moment into that board I've actually got another uh, five or so on order that will be coming but it'll be at least another month or so yet before they arrive so yeah I want to put this into a socket now you could buy sockets for Arduinos, uh, but you can do this as well. If you have some of these things, I'll just put that over there. We have, I have some pin sockets here. So you actually make your own little socketed blocks on board. So if we just open that up, and all you need to do is to cut these. You can see they've got pins along the bottom, 
and the Arduino would slot into the top of those there. So you just trim it to the correct side, which is, is, is really easy. You measure off how many holes you want, and with a pair of pliers clamping just beyond you on you want, you just pull and snap, and then we'll solder a row in there along there, and a row in there along there. It will mean that they are quite high up, the, the Arduino is going to be quite high off the board, but at this moment in time, until I get some new Arduinos, I did not want to commit to soldering one in and leaving it in there, left with not many men if we're doing prototype project work with. So I'm going to make mine like that. So you can see I've actually done that, I've got these headers, pin headers, I've cut to size, they just gone to the Arduino like that. I'll leave them plugged in like that because it leaves it easier to orientate it on the board where I want it. And yeah, that just means I can plug the Arduino out whenever I want to and use it in other projects if I want to. You yourself, if you want it really permanent, you won't bother with these, you just put the Arduino directly into on the board and solder it there. So I'm going to solder this in, I'm only going to solder the pins that I need, which is going to be ground plus 5 volts and the A4, A5 pins etc. Just the actual ones that the projects needed. The rest I'm going to leave unsoldered. Okay there we go, Arduino soldered in into its little raised position. I've also added the screen what I would recommend at this point in time using is just to solder the Arduino in and upload just a simple blink sketch and make sure you've not done anything so drastic as to like maybe short two pins together with your soldering or, or whatever. But uh, being the kind of rebellious person that I am, I've just whacked the screen in. This one's the one I've actually I've pinched it from this board here. So this has got the heartbeat, the heartbeat, the pulse cord on it. So we should see like BPM appear like that and a dead trace pretty much appear on there because there's no actual pulse sensor on there at the moment. So yeah, I've soldered that in. Some people would think, well, why have you soldered a screen in? Well, these are relatively cheap and I have lots of these. As I said, it's just that currently I'm short of these because of, as I said, failure with them. And a lot of them are actually currently in projects. I want to just leave them in for now rather than swapping and changing all over the place. So yeah, I was temporarily short of one of them. So that's why I had to do that solution. Right, let's whack it in. And let's be embarrassed if I've done anything wrong whatsoever. There's a, there's a relatively good chance of that, actually. Um, let's just put it in, though. We'll try and do it warts and all. But, I mean, there wasn't that many solder joints on this. So, we'll see what we get. Oh, a blue screen. Okay. Um, I ordered various colours. Sometimes I get blue, white. I think that's the only two choices I've ever done with. I think blue looks pretty cool. I thought it was going to be a white screen. Like the one we've got here, this one's actually a white screen that's on this one that was uh, working earlier. And this is a, a blue screen like that. I can probably affect the result there. You can wonder, might wonder, that's because the A0 pin uh, is around there. You can see I'm not really affected there, but I can just affect the sensitivity of that analog input by doing that like that on the A0 pin. Anyway, so we'll get the rest of it, we'll get the sensor and the piezo sounder soldered in next. Okay, so that's completed. I've actually hot glued a little piezo sound onto the board as well and got these three little connections for the heartbeat center, sensor even and I've marked it on as negative, positive and the signal and that actually just pops in that way around like that so just I can put my fingers like that and get a trace on there you could obviously if you wanted to plug in an extension wire there and actually have the heartbeat center on a bit of an extension like that but I thought it was a bit more convenient to do that. When you store it, you might have to be careful you don't store it in something press and, and bend and break that. Right, let's plug it in. Here we go. And I'll, I'll put my finger and thumb on it in a minute like that. What I will, I have worn this in a previous video and it's on the write-up as well, is that these are incredibly sensitive. They're not like the ones where you get down at the, the doctor's or the, or the, um, the hospital or whatever where you just sort of put one on your finger or your thumb and it's it just does it more or less perfect all the time. These are cheap for a reason. They're incredibly sensitive to movement so and pressure. So I'm going to put it on anyway. You can see it's just catching the light and it, it sort of like triggers it a bit. So I'll just put my finger and thumb on with a gentle pressure is about right. Just gentle pressure. There we go. That's my usual sort of resting heart rate, around about 80. Making you can see it will jitter about with my slides of torque. That can sometimes make me move a little bit more. And I'm just having a nice gentle pressure 
too much pressure will cause it to detect nothing and basically flat line and too much movement around will also cause massively erroneous results so you could sort of like think you're going to strap this onto you and go jogging you might think oh just strap it on tight no no if you actually tighten your grip here it will flat line as i'm just moving slightly as i'm talking it's all over the place if i just keep quiet for a second you can get a very sensible reading And there we have it. So the only thing I'm going to do with this, I'll plug that for a second. The only thing I'm going to do with this is actually put on uh, an on-off switch so we can add in our uh, battery pack, which is going to go on the back of the unit like that. So uh, I'm going to solder up the on-off switch, which I've already done the wiring for. It just needs to go in. The on-off switch is, is just here. And this is a little simple slider switch. It's going to pop in. You can see on the diagram where it should go. And we'll get that wired up. The only thing is, this one, I, mean, I bought a few of these. They're slightly not the right pitch for the holes, but they do bend a little bit and still work fine. Also, you might need to trim off these two little things. These switches are designed to actually go in some sort of casing like that. And you sort of like tack it, cut a hole in the casing, cut a hole in the casing and put them in like that. And you slide it like that. But I'm just going to put it into the board and solder it up. So I'll come back when I've actually fit, done that and fitted the battery pack. Okay, so that's the completed uh, project with the switch now mounted and soldered in. The battery back stuck on the back with some hot glue, hot glue um, on the actual wires there, but it's a strain relief. But yeah, there is all portable. Let's switch on, make sure it's still working. There we go, let's uh, take a quick pulse. And there we go. Right, normal for me. So that is the project done. I know this has proved it is the most popular project I have ever done. I get so many questions. I think these are built by students for some sort of uh, courses that they're on. So this makes it all I've, I've, and this makes it all very nice and compact. I've been asked several times about. Fitting a switch, battery pack, powering from batteries, put it onto a board, things like that. So, yeah, all in one now. See, as I'm talking, my heart rate is actually raising up. If I calm down for a bit, it was a bit anomalous there. Second. Apart from anomalous ones, it's just, as I say, when you just move your fingers for slightly, you can get quite a few anomalous results. But, yeah, that's it. All very nice, compact. That's it. On-off switch helps a lot, so students can build that as a project, as they have definitely done in the past. And that's about it for now. I hope that is a good project for people, and catch you next time. So if you like that video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, make sure you get all the videos. And if you're that kind of sharing person, hit that sharing button. For a bit of laziness, if you want to subscribe, look at the arrow, click on that icon, and it'll subscribe you. I haven't even scrolled down or anything like that. Is that it for this outro now? Yeah, I think so. Good.